liner. I've got my foundation. I've got uh, some blush all set to go. I'm looking a little tired. I don't know. You know what? Who am I trying to kid? Anything I can do, he can probably do better. I'm off to New York City to meet master makeup artist Kevin Aquan, and hopefully I'll pick up some tricks of the trade. If you put it on, take it off. It's like I have fantasies of like a room full of makeup and it, you know, I open the door and it pours out on me ah. and I just roll around in it. Saw you looking for light. Face painted cigarette white. How did you start? Yes. I wanted to be like either a therapist or something or a painter. And so I decided being a makeup artist was sort of like the two combined, you know? I just read Vogue and Bazaar and started to tear out pictures of people I thought were beautiful and try to make my friends look like them. It made me feel really uh, good to go into Walmart and Lafayette with my friend looking like um, Patty Hanson, you know? <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, you have I was to openly gay when I was in high school, and it was uh, kind of Redneck. irritating to a lot of people. I was uh, almost killed by some kids with a pickup truck, so I decided oh, yeah. I should probably not go back there. So how, how do you go from, you know, a small town boy and... Louisiana to the cover of here. Oh my God! Well, um, bizarre. Where, where's your work here? That's that, it, that's isn't it? it? Yeah, the cover. Yeah, it, the cover yeah, Harper's yeah, Bazaar. Yeah. <laughs> I moved here with my boyfriend at the time. His name is Jed. We were causing a lot of trouble down there and, and uh, having a lot of problems thereof. So we moved to New York together. I ended up being at a studio, mm -hmm. and. Uh, this, this girl, Miami Wong, called, and I, I recognized her voice, and I said, hi, my name is Kevin Oakland. I said, oh, we've been looking for you. Bring your book back. And I thought she was just being nice, but I thought, okay, might as well just do it. The next day, they called up and said, we want to book you for Vogue with Stephen Mizell and Meg Tilly. And I, I cried for two days. I called my mother. It was the, the happiest day of my life. That's the red face from your dress. The picture of the people you impressed. Hangs on a wall around here. Vision starts to cry. The hardest shoot I ever did was, um, oh, the most difficult, was um, when I worked with Barbara Streisand. It was, it was very hard to get through that day. I mean, I kept running to the bathroom to cry because I couldn't believe I was there, you know? And, and actually, um, my cousin and I grew up loving her, and he um, and I uh, grew up in Louisiana together, and our dream was to one day be um, her hair and makeup team because he was a hairdresser. Oh, okay. And a year before the shooting happened, he died of AIDS. And oh, no. so he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't able to be there with me, but in, in spirit, he was there, I know. And so it was, that was another part of it that was very difficult and very wonderful. I felt like I had come full circle with, with you know, my cousin. We, we did it together, even if he couldn't be there. So what, what are the guys in the pickup trucks in Louisiana think now? <laughs> I don't care. Everybody in my community from Lafayette, Louisiana, mm -hmm. missed out on what I had to offer because they drove me up here to New York. And I could have been giving to that community. Yeah. But instead, they said, oh, you're different. Get out of here. So I left and I came here. And now I'm contributing to this community. You know, so it's, it's, it's sad when people uh, take someone who's different and throw them out when they don't realize they have something very important there, something special they could learn from. We all can, people who are different. Yeah.